It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC North. It's the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals coming up next. On a warm late summer afternoon, we've got football at Paycor Stadium here in the Queen City of Cincinnati. Straight ahead, it's a rematch from last year's AFC wildcard game as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, I think everybody seems ready to turn the page from 2022. A tough finish down the stretch. Some wacky plays in that loss to the Bengals in the wild card round. They just want to reset and come out swinging in 2023. Oh, I love how you just expressed that. You're exactly right. Reset and come out and play in Ravens football again. And look, they had some anxious moments in the offseason. Now, a sigh of relief. They have their key pieces in place. They're ready to attack. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. And this taken in at the goal line. Fighting his way through contact. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. And got his man complete. A huge play there right off the bat. And even 40 yards. I've heard of quick strike offenses, but this has taken that to the extreme. I mean, the very first snap of the ball game, Normally you're thinking, let's get our quarterback comfortable and get him into the flow of the game, but not here. They come out attacking from the outset, and it pays off in a big way. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Jackson options out left. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Second and nine. Play action. Now Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 24-yard line. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Jackson. Complete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They tried it there on the opening drive, but that ball's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Now it's Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. 
Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried to dump off, lost yardage. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first and threes in. Well, they started the drive backed up pretty deep, but a nice effort to overcome the field position, get into field goal range on the game's opening possession. And Brandon, I think from where they started, the initial thought was, can we get one or two first downs and help out our defense after we pump the ball away with field position? But as that drive went on, I think their sights got set a little bit higher. They were thinking touchdown, ended up settling in between and coming away with a field goal. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. Charlie Jones now from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helping the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made a conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Back to Mixon on second down. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. That's pulled in at the 32. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. They'll run. This is Gus Edwards powering his way forward. And they will finally get to him down at the Bengals' 21-yard line. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six, 
instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Jackson now. He's got his target. That's complete. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped it to one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a good effort there after the catch. He looked the ball in and then tried to get it to the goal line. What a nice tackle to get him down. But they're set up well now. First and goal at the one. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Edwards diving for the end zone and he'll get there. Touchdown. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead grows to 10 0. A drive that time of six plays, and it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession and try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They went three and out on their first drive. Things already looking better here. First and ten. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And oh, he caught it up! Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball, you know there's gonna be some traffic somewhere. They've gotta put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. After the fumble recovery, it's Jackson. They set up the screen to Hill. A strong running. <laughs> the first down screen pass, good for five. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, back door to him, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Play action, it's Jackson. And this is gonna be hauled in by the tight end Andrews. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. 23 yards on the play. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Throwing is Jackson. This for Beckham, and he's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Ravens. A five-yard touchdown catch. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. 
That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball, the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So an early advantage now to Goodwin. 17-0 our score as they kick this one away. On the return is Charlie Jones. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Cincinnati set to take over once again. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Now Burrow. Here's Higgins out on the right side. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down, here's Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to the 39. The LSU connection, Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Back to Mixon on first down. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. In motion left is Higgins. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Adafe Owe so quick, and he gets to him there behind the line. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 17-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Well, every now and then I can speak from experience because I do know, as a defender, it is awfully hard to stay with your man on these crossing routes because even if you don't get picked, there's a danger of being picked either by one of their receivers or maybe by your own defender. And on that play, that worked quite well. And he's got it. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Mixon looking for a signal, but none forthcoming. They stopped him shy of the goal line. 
Only a yard that time, second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. On second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. Burrow looking to pass. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A one-yard touchdown pass, and the Bengals get a bit closer. Evan McPherson for the extra point. And it's 17-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. Touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They have to be pleased with the way that they moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here. In the first yeah, game. by the numbers, he's on pace for 200 plus right now. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. After one, 17-7 is our score. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. A yard all they need, but it's third down. it back to the line of scrimmage that's it call it no gain on the keeper and it's going to bring up a fourth down fourth down and out comes jordan stout here to punt back deep for cincinnati the rookie charlie jones Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 47 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything, and against that man coverage, there is no space available in incompletion as a result. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Burrow will throw. Oh, he'll want that one back, incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department, third down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it, trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. 
On third down, Burrow. And he is caught. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now a second and two. Here's Burrow. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he is going to have the Bengals first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And this one nearly picked off. Yeah, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. On second down, Burrow over the middle to Smith. And they'll get this down to the 10. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands, and oftentimes the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. This goes out wide for Nixon, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Mixing up the middle. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet. The thing second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job. Hold him to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Travion Williams taking it in from a yard out. And the Bengals are back within a score. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. to the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. 
And now here come the Ravens. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. On second down, it's Edwards. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Now Jackson. Underneath here to Hill. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now, now is a punter, Jordan Stout. Oh, the return is Jones. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen, put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Now it's Burrow. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Again, it's Burrow on second and ten. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. He will find his man chase complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. Another big hitter there, this one good for 18. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Inside handoff to Nixon. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and a yard. Again, it's Mixon, and he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. The 
This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. And they go play action now. Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. On first and ten, Joe Burrow got a man and he hits him in stride. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. Now it's Burrow. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. From the gun on third down is Burrow. Touchdown, Bengals! with a touchdown pass from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals have taken the lead. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. You know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. to the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away well now how about this return Devin Duvernay and he will score touchdown Ravens now for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent. The return excellent. The result, six points. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Oh, the return is Jones from the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. T. Higgins leading the Cincinnati receiving core out for this upcoming series. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on the drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with a touchdown. <laughs> yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of players. 
So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. And Burrow's saying, let's go, let's go. From the 40 now on second down, Burrow. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Burrow. Open man is Higgins. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, here's Burrow. And that one too wide and incomplete. They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Just wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive, but it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. McPherson's kick is good. And that will tie us at 24 all. Maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you get the second half to play. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback there's a look at receiver Jamar Chase as the Bengals get set to go on offense they have to like what they've gotten from him in this game 
Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards has the eight catches. Well, they found him eight times in that first half, and this is his first catch of quarter number three. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. First down, here's Burrow. Another one into the hands of Jamar Chase. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Again, it's Burrow. He completes it to Burley. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. You have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Now Burrow on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, he's been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. A quick throw there is incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing again, it's Burrow. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him. And they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and we will remain tied here in this third quarter. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it, and this one winds up no good. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Second and nine from the 44. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. They'll go back to Edwards on first down. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. 
64 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. Oh, this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. They'll run the toss here. Edwards. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Throwing is Jackson. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 16. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got up with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Throw right side here, taken in by Bateman. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. To throw is Jackson. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. On third and one, Jackson. And he's got it. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. And that will get out of bounds. Lucky there. They keep possession inside the five. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one. And the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. They go play action now. Jackson, here's a diving catch right side. And yeah, this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Isaiah Likely with an amazing diving catch. And the Ravens have taken the lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. Just that split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Tucker with the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send down the field goal unit and then and I even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Kind of pick themselves up from that one. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. 
Nicks another toss right. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. 89 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. A solid pickup there by Mixon. And when he's running it this way, the Cincinnati offense takes on an extra dimension. They love to run the football and shut people down with Mixon carrying the load. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Here's Burrow. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. And Andrews going to have a Ravens first down as he'll get this up past the 45. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Edwards now on first and 10. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Great to see Edwards back doing what he does best. Mr. Dependable for the Ravens' backfield. He's faced injury woes the last two years, missing all of 2021 and almost half of 2022. But back at full strength now, he can be a load. And he's got it to about the 40. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Now an option play on second down. Had a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Nice pickup, 10 yards and a first down on the keeper. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this, I'll take it, I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set and let's start over. On first and 10, it's Jackson. That's gonna be knocked away and incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try to mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. On the option right is Jackson. Oh, he's hit, he lost the football, put it on the carpet. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Now, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. So, possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Here's Jackson to throw. That is caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Odell Beckham 
Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Ravens go up by two touchdowns. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Burrow will throw. Short throw to Smith. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Burrow looking to pass. And this pass broken up. The contact well timed there, and now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded just inside the 20. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. A give for Edwards running right, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 12. Jackson. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on to kick it away. Here's Jones on the return. A good head down running on the return gets about 15 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. And that one caught downfield by Bowie. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Tyler Boyd, 
seven yards. And the Bengals are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Ravens offense getting set and ready for this next drive. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. going to get to the line to run another play so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close you're watching the nfl on ea sports back now in cincinnati the ball on the 32 it's second and two it's the ravens in control of the football they've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth four yards the pick up first down as many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day that one team has more trouble with the heat than another? And especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball. You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those <laughs> were gone in the first quarter. They were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop it. DJ Reader there on the tackle. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. They work now on second and nine. Again, it's Edwards. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes. But they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The offense on third down, they're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. Jackson now. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 40. Great way to convert on third down there, 21 yards the play. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now it's Jackson. Dumps it off to Edwards. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards there and a first down. 
One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Here's second and ten. Jackson. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So, seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Third down, Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Play action. It's Jackson. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one, and in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Justin Tucker. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. No run back here for Jones. A touchback. The Bengals getting set to go. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration, pure unbridled joy after that one. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. First and 10 at the 37 yard line. From the gun, a give to Mixon. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. Second and seven. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Throw left side complete, that's Boyd. Down to the 10, and all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bengals have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So that's a really big play here in the fourth quarter. And don't look now. They're right back in this game. Did it feel to you as it did to me that maybe they were a little bit soft in what they were lining up with on defense? Almost like they were protecting the lead rather than trying to make a play. And now that lead is down to just one score. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter.
after the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Out of the gun, they give to Edwards. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Here's third and six. Here's Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? So frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or a takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Throwing is Jackson. Caught left side, it's Beckham. He's been big, two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Barney, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, and his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. This is Hill on the draw play. And the big boys up front, they're gonna stop him right at the line. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And it feels like the momentum has shifted. They scored, then their defense forces that last punt. And now a chance to tie the game on this possession. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. A good move, but not much room to run. Brought down at the five. Getting in there for the tackle, Marcus Williams. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Second and six coming up. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. That's a 
fourth quarter down to the final two minutes and we've got a one score game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Throwing, Burrow, and he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And he's going to have a Bengals first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. That gets him the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. To throw, Burrow. Short throw to Smith. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big game. Now second and four. Burrow. Catch is made here by Earl Smith Jr. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. He has been terrific today, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Running flawless two-minute drill right here. This has been quarterbacking 101 with a flourish. Here's first down. Now Burrow. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. But they got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. This is Smith with a grab. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and 10. Burrow. Pushes past him. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. Second down, eight yards to go. Here's Burrow. Out of his hands quickly to Higgins. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Here's first and goal. Throwing now is Joe Burrow. And he'll just get rid of it. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now it's Burrow. That's to the pylon and incomplete. A couple extra 
defensive backs out there in the dime. And because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Here we go with Burrow. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. And now time for one final play that has to be obviously in the end zone. Can't wait to see what they call, but you want to get it to your best player. Sometimes you have to do it by formation. Move everyone to one side, and maybe he gets a one-on-one -on -one isolated on the backside. A final shot now for Burrow. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams, right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful 